uh, your personal uh, journey here, how long you've been here, and uh, what was your circumstances? Uh, well, it was about a year and about a year and a half ago that uh, uh, I was traveling through Portland, and uh, my RV, uh, the engine blew up on it. And I didn't have funds to get it fixed, and so. Um, Portland being the town that it is wouldn't let me have my RV on the streets, so um, I ended up having to give that up and I found Right to Dream too, and became uh, actively involved in, in uh, the things that we do here. And would you say it pretty much uh, is your survival? I mean, what would life be without it? Well, right now um, I'm sleeping in a, a minivan okay. and uh, I'm still houseless. Uh, but I'm not uh, sleeping uh, at the site. I come down regularly to help out. Um, but me personally, I see houselessness uh, all over Portland. Um, there's, you know, I, I don't see neighborhoods where there aren't people that, that are in need of some place to sleep. So uh, it really, <clears throat> the experience has really opened my heart and opened my mind to a lot of people. Um, there has always been a stigmatism in our society that uh, looks down on people that don't have something you can take from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, houseless people generally fall into that category. Um, and, you know, some houseless people are out here because they have drug problems. Some are out here because they have emotional problems, mental illness. They should be in... Uh, treatment they should be getting uh, you know they should be a lot of people out here um, well not a lot I'd say maybe 30 percent maybe 20 percent should be in housing because they're not able to get into housing on their own that that we as a society should definitely be taking care of these people they're unable to take care of themselves and what do you have to say you know there, there's an ideology in this country that you know tough luck uh, you have you're responsible for yourself and you you know shouldn't be occupying city blocks and you know you guys are the takers and just want a free hand uh, you know a free lunch so to speak well you know the people that are out here aren't the ones that gobbled up as much of the wealth as they could in this country when it was available to them they're not the ones out here drawing property lines saying you can't be on this piece of land that God gave to everybody and those are the same ideology that's, that, that oppresses houseless people and keeps them houseless is the same ideology that keeps the, the super wealthy wealthy and keeps the wealth channels uh, funneling towards the top 1% of our society. And what's interesting to me is a lot of the people here used to be middle class. That's exactly right. Um, as, as the years go on, we see that uh, uh, the wealth that's held by the middle class keeps going down. People keep losing their houses. People are being foreclosed on because of, of uh, economic and social manipulations. Uh, everything from the housing bubble to, um, you know, higher taxes and uh, higher uh, costs of living, lower wages. Uh, inflationary tactics uh, by our Federal Reserve. All of these things contribute to making the poor poor and those that are getting by not be able to get by anymore. And it's, a, it's something I've seen over the course of my entire life. Uh, circumstances are getting worse and worse for people economically in our country. And I think that if we're going to turn that around, we really have to do it as a country. We were talking a little bit about how fundamentally hanging over a place like this is greed and that the corporatists and the one percent um, even though they're uh, searching for material things they, they'll really never find uh, fulfillment. Can you kind of explain that? Yeah, it's not I mean it's not just the corporatists it's like everybody in society that that focuses their life on greed and the acquisitional acquisition of material gains. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Uh, really what it is is that they have this greed because uh, they feel a lack in their life. 
and I, f I really feel like sorrow for these people because I know that on, they're sitting up on top of the world uh, financially, but they're neglecting their, their spiritual, their mental, their social needs, you know, their uh, need to really help others and be involved on in personal relationships with people. It's very difficult to do that if you believe that everybody in the world is trying to take everything from you. And I, these, these people that are, are in the top 1% believe that they're going to find fulfillment in life by just going out and grabbing everything from everybody else and not hoarding it and saying, these are mine, I have power over these things, you can't touch them. But honestly, they're never going to find that, that inner peace, they're never going to find that that love that exists within them if they don't do things to pursue the development of their mental, social, and spiritual lives. I mean, that's a part of every human, and when you neglect that, you end up being uh, somebody that sits on top, lording over everything, and not being fulfilled in life. Do you think in some cases um, it's, it's actually the people with less materi materially that actually have more uh, internally? Well, what you'll find out on the streets out here on the, the battlefront of poverty is that the people that have the least are willing to give the most. And uh, they learn to rely on each other. They learn to give to each other, to accept from each other, and to make real heart-to-heart -heart connections with other people because without that, you won't survive.